I'm going to speak on a very, very important topic for each and every one of us as believers, uh, which is the topic of, uh, of worship. Uh, let's just pray before we start. Holy Spirit, we come before you this, uh, this morning and we just ask you, Lord, that you would speak to us. Holy Spirit, we surrender ourselves to you. Lord, we pray that, Lord God, your voice will be heard and that we will recognize your voice and we will learn to obey every word that you speak to us. Have your way with us today. Lord, transform our lives. I pray, Lord God, by the, by the mercy that you so abundantly shower upon us, Lord. Lord, that you would release that grace over us and that, Lord, you will speak to us and that, Lord, through this word, you will transform our lives. Have your way in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Um, you see, the, the usual tendency that we have when we think about worship is to think about music, is to think about uh, exciting stuff that is happening, uh, you know, great lights, great sounds, uh, smoke effects, uh, worship leaders, all of this. But that was all external. In the Old Testament, worship was external. Healing and uh, deliverance and breakthroughs, all these things that we talk about, externals. You see, all these things were part of the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the Lord came in and he gave us a new system. Amen. Where he said that even our worship is now internal. We are called to be a people that worship him internally. I'm not saying that we don't need songs. I'm not saying we don't need worship leaders. Please don't get me wrong. None of this is what I'm trying to say. But what I'm trying to say to you today is that our worship is far more than just a song that we sing. It is far more than, uh, uh, than you know, us being able to clap for two songs, dance for two songs, and then go down on our knees and cry and uh, sing another song, which is going to, you know, bring in the somber mood and the emotions and all of that. That is not worship. Amen. So I want you to, first of all, turn your Bibles with me to Exodus 32, verse 10. And this is what it says. It says, now let me alone that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them and I will make you a great nation. Here's God speaking to Moses. And God says, Moses, let me alone that my anger may burn against those people. And I read this verse and it, it really stirred me up that one man can by himself hold God. We know the story of Jacob, how he wrestled with God. We know uh, the story of, of Moses now, where uh, this man held God to such a degree that God could not go. And God had to tell Moses, Moses, let me alone. We need to look at these verses and wonder, God, what did he do that he could hold on to you? What did he do that you could not turn your face away from this man? What did he do? It was definitely not physical power. But you see, that is the grace that God releases over a city or a nation. That when God releases a grace over a city or a nation, He births worshippers in that city. Because when, when worship arises, God can never turn His back away to those people. Amen. Throughout the New Testament, if you see, you will recognize that whenever they worshipped, there was a miracle that followed. Amen. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, you will see that wherever there was worship, it was followed by miracles. Amen. And there is the story of the of, of that girl of that lady who came and said, My daughter is very sick. Amen. And Jesus said that, you know, I cannot throw uh, uh, food that is for the children uh, uh, on the table to dogs. And instead of getting offended, that lady just went down on her knees and she started worshipping. And Jesus could not step out of that place. Jesus turned, looked at her and said, woman, your faith, your faith, woman, your child will be healed. Amen. It does not matter what circumstance we are going through. It is the grace of God that he allows us to worship. And when, he, when, when we become worshippers, amen, like Moses out here, I mean, just imagine where God comes to a place where he's telling Moses, Moses, can you just stop? 
this is how i look at it in my bible i say moses can you just stop i'm angry with this people and i want to respond but moses continues to worship and because he continues to worship these people are set free amen in the same way if you look at acts chapter 16 paul and silas are in a prison and as they worship you know what happens as they worship the chains not only of paul and silas but every prisoner in that place is set free their chains are broken and i believe that god is teaching us that when genuine worship begins when genuine worship begins amen even if it does not matter whether you're one or whether you're two or whether you're corporate sitting together as a as a group what happens is the chains of every person in that room chains of every person in that city in that neighborhood can be broken by the power of one man's worship and that is amazing and i want us to by the end of this service i believe that you and i we will become people who will be such worshipers people who will who will stop complaining people who will start uh, 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 stop thinking about their own challenges but people who will go out there and start becoming worshipers for their city worshipers for their nation uh, people who will see a breakthrough because they have learned the secret art of worshiping god hallelujah jesus said something the lord said something very powerful in jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 he said you will seek me and you will find me if you seek me with all your heart jeremiah 29 verse 13 it's a very very uh, uh, special verse for me i have learned and i have mugged this and i have used this so many times in my prayer time you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart what a powerful verse Jesus God himself he's promising us and he says you will seek me and you will find me but then he puts in the condition if you seek me with all your heart and i believe we must be a people that will seek god with all our heart that will that will go out there and be a people that will say god i want you i want you i want you i'm not looking at the clock i'm not looking at my time i'm not looking at how how much i have given you i'm looking at how much more i can give so that i can get all of you lord Amen. In the book of Mark, uh, Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-two to twenty-three. Here is a crazy, crazy verse. Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-two to twenty-three. He says, Jesus says on the Sermon on the Mount. This is what he says. He says, "Many will say to me on that day, 'Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles?' And then I will declare to them, 'I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness.'" You know, these guys, they were casting out demons, they were healing the sick, they were on every Christian channel, they were doing all kinds of things that made them look very Christian. But you know what Jesus says? Jesus says, "I never knew you." And the word, the Greek, the Hebrew word that is used there is a word called "ginosko." Ginosko is knowing between man and woman, as in in a married couple. It's not just knowing randomly that I know of such and such. No, it is knowing in intimacy, knowing in in a relationship that is far more than just knowing of somebody. We can know of God, or we can know God. Amen. And we are called to be a people. Jesus is declaring it out here, and He's saying, "Hey, I'm not here to just reveal myself to you as head knowledge. I don't want you to know me as head knowledge. I want you to know me in intimacy. I want you to know me in a relationship that is far more intimate than head knowledge, where you will say, 'God, I love you so much.'" And when somebody says something, you will be able to say, "That is not the God that I worship. That is not the God that I serve." I know my God. I know Him intimately. I know the relationship that I share with Jesus. Uh, in the book of Mark, He spoke about uh, two kinds of worshippers. Let me show you the first one. Mark chapter seven, verse five to seven. So the Pharisees and the religious scholars asked Jesus, "Why don't your disciples live according to the age-old tradition passed down by our elders? They should first ceremoniously." wash their hands before eating jesus replied you are frauds and hypocrites how accurately did isaiah prophesy about your phonies when he said these people honor me with their words while their hearts run far away from me their worship is nothing more than a charade 
for they continue to insist on their man-made traditions that are equal to the and uh, that their man-made traditions are equal to the instructions of god you abandon god's commandments just to keep man's rituals so to ceremoniously wash utensils cups and other things just words their worship is nothing more than charade this is what he says in verse 7 he says that their worship is empty i hope you're following me jesus is defining that there is a set of people out there who are part of church who are part of modern day christianity a set of people out there who who go out there and do a lot of things that look like religion and he says it's nothing but empty worship i never knew you ginosco i never had intimacy with you i never had a relationship with you jesus is talking about these people and he's saying their worship is nothing but empty worship and then he goes on to teach us he says that there is true worshipers in john chapter 4 uh, verse 23 this is what jesus says he says the time is coming and now is where true worshipers will seek the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeks such that worship him in spirit and in truth he saying true worshipers are going to be worshipers that worship god not just externally singing one fast song singing one slow song going down on their knees lifting up their hands you see we are told even today that david danced and therefore we must dance all that was good brothers and sisters but that was external that was old testament we are today invited into a deeper level of worship in to in today's times in the new covenant because jesus came as our forerunner and he opened that path for us today you and i are invited into a deeper level of worship a deeper intimate level of worship and he says true worshipers will worship him in spirit and in truth and jesus if you if you study that verse he's saying but the time is coming that time had not come because jesus was talking to this lady and jesus had not yet created that path or opened that path for everybody to follow only he was walking on that path because he was filled with the holy spirit so he says but the time is coming when i will rip open that veil i will lay down my will on that altar and because i will lay down my will i will show you a new way to access the heart of the father i will show you a new way to access into the holy of holies which is by laying down your will for god's will and he says that my dear brothers and sisters will be the day when you will be able to go in as a true worshipper and then you will be a true worshipper because you will lay down your will he says the time is coming and yet now is because jesus is already there he says where true worshipers will worship him in spirit and in truth when he says in spirit he's telling us let me show you this the old testament showed us the temple like i've i've shared this earlier also in church the temple had three parts the outer court the inner court and the holy of holies the outer court the inner court and the holy of holies let me define that to you in terms of uh, our body the tabernacle was the dwelling place for god in the old testament today we are the dwelling place for god so we have the outer court which is our body we have the inner court which is our soul which is where our emotions are you see outer court is where we dance and we sing the uh, the the inner court or the emotion the soul is where we start crying in the presence of god amen but he says there is a holy of holies where now you can go in and have that relationship which is where your spirit is which nobody knows of only your heart knows your spirit knows amen and he's saying you can now worship in the holy of holies the most holy place in your spirit intimate with god where you could be in the middle of your work but still be so devoted and so tuned with the father why because it is spirit worship and he's inviting us into that place we can now worship god in spirit hallelujah his spirit dwelling in me my spirit in him tuned together there is this this relationship that we can establish today and we can have that intimacy see 
this worship is what satan was after hallelujah satan was after this kind of worship satan uh, when jesus came and jesus was in the wilderness satan tempted jesus and he sh- took him to a to a high place and he showed him all the cities and all the wealth of the world and he said all this i will give you if you will just bow down and worship me what was he saying he's saying i have the power to give everything to you but today I'm asking you that you will just worship me and I will give you all of this. And Jesus did not uh, give in. Jesus did not submit to that. Jesus refused to do that. Satan was the head of the angels, the highest order, leading everyone into worship of God. In his heart came this desire that I will draw all this worship unto myself. That I will draw all this attention that was supposed to go to God. I will keep this worship for myself. And the perfect archangel, the most beautiful of them all, the most glorious of them all, in that one moment, he became the ugliest of them all. What was the sin? It was not adultery. It was not that he went out there and tried to kill somebody or fornicate or any of those things. All that he did was he tried to keep worship unto himself. And that is what we must remember. when we keep away worship when we when we keep worship to ourselves as leaders as worship leaders as pastors when we allow the worship that is coming to god to be kept to ourselves wow pastor what a beautiful worship session what a beautiful time and this and that remember to turn the focus back to god brothers and sisters i want you to turn your bibles with me to uh to the book of genesis chapter 22 Now this is the first time that the word worship is used. Um I believe that God spoke about worship in the book of uh, Genesis because he wanted to teach us what real worship is all about. Amen. And so here is the story of Abraham. Abraham has been tested twice before in the Bible. uh the first time was when he was asked to leave his hometown his homeland and he had to come out into a land that god would show uh the second time was when the herdsmen of lot and the herdsmen of abraham were fighting and abraham gave lot the choice and said lot you choose whatever you want and whatever is left i will take and thereby he won that testing also with god and now here is the third time he is being tested again and this time it is his son and the word of god says in verse 5 genesis chapter 22 verse 5 god is god has asked abraham to go up on a mountain that god will show him mount moriah and there he is supposed to offer the sacrifice and it is very really uh, it's very important for us to understand he could have been asked to do that worship that sacrifice not worship that sacrifice immediately but god he gave him 3 days time saying go to the mountain that i will show you and there you you offer your son as a sacrifice to me 3 days to choose as you walk with your son is this god worth me following is this god worth me giving up everything in my life the son is the one that i love even more than my wife isaac was not a sin isaac was his obsession remember this isaac was not a sin isaac was his obsession and god tells him bring isaac to the altar and here is what abraham says chapter 22 verse 5 he says to his servants he says stay here with the donkey and the lad and i will go out there and we will worship and return worship that which is worth my everything i will give to god that which is worth most precious that which is most precious to me i will lay down at the altar it could be your girlfriend it could be your career it could be your job it could be your future it could be your dreams it could be your son and your daughter's dreams are you willing are you ready this is the first time the word a worship is used it's the story of abraham the second time and this is the first time chronologically the oldest book in the bible is the book of job and the story of job is that in one day everything that job had was taken away satan uh, uh came into the presence of god and spoke to god and said god 
if if you take away everything from job job will not worship you job will not uh, uh, lift up his hands and god said i want to see how much job you worship me even when everything that is precious to you is taken away and so job loses his children he loses his money he loses his cattle he loses his wealth he loses everything else his wife says why don't you just curse god and die and at that point of time job makes this very powerful powerful statement in verse 21 he says naked i have come from my mother's womb and i naked i will return there the lord gave the lord has taken away blessed be the name of the lord verse 20 says then job arose tore his robes shaved his head fell to the ground and worshiped may this be our story may this be the lesson that we learn that we will be worshipers of the king of kings and the lord of lords this real god may we be real worshipers jesus said there are true worshipers and false worshipers jesus said i don't even know you to false worshipers may we be worshipers the book of romans chapter 12 and i'm going to close with this romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 says something very very powerful it says therefore i urge you beloved brethren by the mercies of god present your bodies as a living and a holy sacrifice acceptable to god for this is your spiritual service to god of worship do not be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of god is what is good and acceptable and perfect it starts by saying this is the mercy of god god knows that we were sinners god knows that we have fallen god knows what you did even last night when you screamed at your wife when you when you yelled at your children god knows how badly you fell when you switched on that computer but he says by the mercies of god present yourself as a living sacrifice and this is what i want to tell you beloved In the old covenant and I'm going to read that scripture to you Exodus chapter 12 verse 3 5 and 6 tell all the congregation of Israel on the 10th day of the month every man shall take a lamb according to his father's house a lamb for a household your lamb shall be without blemish a male a year old you may take it from the sheep or from the goats and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight the lamb stays with you for 3 days this is what the book, the, the word of god is teaching us and in those 3 days you will inspect the lamb and you will inspect if there is any fault in that lamb and then at the at the twilight of the fourth day 14th morning 14th day morning fourth day morning sorry you will offer it as a living sacrifice as a sacrifice what is what is god saying to us you see he says present yourself and i want to explain this god showed this to me and i was so blessed and it has it has really challenged my life and i wanted to it to be a blessing to you as i share this with you you see they would bring the lamb or the goat before the priest for sacrifice in the outer court and the door of the tabernacle and as they would bring the lamb the lamb would be put into a pan a plate that would be kept there and the priest would actually look at the lamb on the top on the bottom behind the ears on the legs everywhere it had to be perfect why because that lamb would represent the person who's making the sacrifice he is saying i want to be as spotless as this lamb i want to be as blemishless i want to be as without wrinkle as this lamb i don't want a lame lamb because i don't want to be lame i don't want to be a blind lamb because i don't want to be blind so i want to offer to god everything that is the best and the priest would inspect for 3 days 
Jesus was inspected by all of Israel for three and a half years when his ministry began. He was inspected by God for 30 years when he grew up. And he was found to be spotless, wrinkleless, without blemish. And he was offered as that, as that spotless, wrinkleless, blemishless sacrifice. And now today we are being asked to follow in that path. And when we stand in that plate, present yourself into that plate, beloved brothers and sisters. You know what? Our high priest is going to inspect us. Our high priest is Jesus. I hope this, this really challenges your walk with God. So when, when you come to a, a pastor or a leader and say, Pastor, is it okay for me to watch this movie? Is it okay for me to watch that movie? I don't know. But I know someone who knows and who will inspect you in that pan. Someone who will, who will check whether what you're doing is right or whether what you're doing is wrong. So he says, present yourself. The Christian life is a life where you will keep presenting yourself before the, before the high priest. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. You, do, you, you have the choice to jump out and to run away if you don't want to live there, if you don't want to be in that pan. If you don't want to sit on that altar, the, the lamb was cut and placed on the altar. All of it, every part of the lamb. The first part, the second bit was cut into five pieces. The first part, second part, third part, fourth part, fifth part. You know what? The fire would not come even if four parts were put up there. Only when all the parts of the lamb was put up there, the fire would come from heaven. Thereby telling us that there is no part of you that you can keep away to yourself. You cannot keep that girlfriend away from God. You cannot keep that secret business away from God. You cannot keep that office rendezvous away from God. Every part of you has to be placed on that altar. And you know what, Subi? Subi, you have a choice today. You are a living sacrifice. You have the choice to jump off that altar. But Subi, if you choose to, and if you want to stay on the altar, you have to be willing to lay all of it on the altar. Every part of you. Every part of you. Your best part and your worst part. You have to lay everything at the altar. And I pray this morning that you would learn to lay everything at the altar. That you would be willing to put yourself on that pan and say, God, I am willing to make myself available for divine inspection. Surrender your lives in such a way, brothers and sisters, that you would be open to divine inspection. Give yourself to God in such a fashion that you would be open to divine inspection, that you would say, God, I am willing to give all of me. I don't want to fight. I don't want to take on this challenge. I want to give all of me to you, God. May this be our story. May we be a holy sacrifice, a living and a holy sacrifice. A sacrifice that can be cleared through the inspection. I know that we are covered by the blood of the Lamb. I know that our sins are not remembered by God. I know that God has forgiven us our sins. But our worship, when we raise it up, it has to bring a smile on the face of God. You know what it says about Jesus? Let me show you this. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. It says, Walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. It was a fragrant aroma to the nostril of God. Can I tell you a secret? A lot of things that smell repulsive to man is fragrant to God. You know, when the animal was being burnt on the sacrifice altar, the smell was not aroma to any of us. It was not a pleasing aroma to the people around. 
the hide and everything that was burning the hair that was burning everything it created a, a stench but it was a pleasing aroma to god and god looked on that person and said sinless forgiven paid the price in the same way when jesus's life was offered the bible says it was a fragrant aroma it was not a successful life by any standards he had just 12 disciples out of which one deserted him one cheated him many deserted him it was not a successful life he didn't have a large church he didn't have a great bank balance he didn't have all the money of the world or all the successful connections or contacts of the world but you know what he was a fragrant aroma and i want to say this to us as a church may we be a fragrant aroma may our lives be consistently such that it will be a sweet smelling aroma unto the lord let's bow our heads let's pray father what do i pray lord what do i pray to you you know my heart you know the hearts of these people this is this morning lord words fail me i have nothing to offer you except for myself and i pray that every area of my life every area of the life of these people would be a fragrant aroma to you may we be pleasing to you lord when you look at us lord may it bring a smile on your face lord may our lives be about the audience of one that will not be about who we impress and who we don't impress it will not be about our connections or the wealth that we have gathered no lord may it not be about any of this god may it be about how much we can bring a smile on your face may our lives be a worship unto you in jesus name and all god's people said amen amen